CIH3 forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. Good evening to you. How about those blue skies out there this evening? Gorgeous shot there on our Flooring America carriage crossing camera overlooking Decatur tonight. Lots of sun today, but look to the west. Clouds and rain pushing in our direction. We're dry this evening, but tomorrow we are anticipating more rain and maybe even a few thunderstorms. As we look at temperatures, mid-60s right now from Springfield to Champaign down to Effingham and through this evening. After that sun sets, we will see our temperatures cooling back down to those upper 40s by 11 o'clock. More on that thunderstorm potential for tomorrow. Could we see severe weather? We'll answer that coming up. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Police have closed down several streets in Vermilion County. What we know as they're trying to investigate. Plus, a drug rehab center moved into a neighborhood. Why people who live there can't do anything about it. And a car burst into flames with someone still inside. The life-saving moves that came next. We continue our coverage of breaking news now. State police are investigating what they're calling an officer-involved shooting. This happened in Tilton around 3 o'clock this afternoon. It's on 14th Street between Dean and Greenwood Cemetery Road. WCI3's Bryce Beamett has been live at the scene. So, Bryce, at this point, what can you tell us? Well, like you mentioned, Jessica, it is now an officer-involved shooting, and it actually involves a Tilton police officer. And like you said, it happened around 3 o'clock today, and one neighbor told me she actually heard a gunshot, and then she told me she went to go get her mail, and she saw an officer by a car, which she said had four people in it. She said the officer yelled for everyone to get out of the area, and she took off. That's when she heard the gunshot. From Milling County Sheriff's Office, Illinois State Police, and Tilton Police are all here investigating. They have blocked off a big portion of this road. One officer told me Carl and OSF were here. Multiple neighbors told me the car belongs to someone who lives just one street down. One neighbor I spoke to said that this is unusual for this residential and this neighborhood area, and he says that this is just not something that typically happens here. In Tilton, I'm Bryce Beamant, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Bryce, thank you for that update. Now for another update tonight, a man accused of killing his grandmother appeared in Nevada court today. Clayton Anderson is charged with murdering Sherry Hubbard. Thomas Miller is accused of helping cover it up. Nevada law says they won't be extradited to Illinois until their cases there are closed. Officials say both men waive their preliminary hearing rights, so they are now bound for district court in Las Vegas. They're expected back in court on May 20th. Sherry Hubbard's body was found in her Clarksburg home back on April 18th. 15-year-old boys facing charges for attempted murder in Hoopston. Officers responded to a fight in Parkview Court. Police say at least one person was hurt and a deadly weapon was used. Detectives say the suspect took off before police arrived. The boy was taken into custody the following day. The Vermilion County State's Attorney is not commenting. A third grader in Sangamon County has died. Officials with Glenwood Elementary School in Chatham say nine-year-old Nolan Piper died. And he will be remembered for his sweet laugh and brave heart. Glenwood will be providing counseling sessions for students who need to talk. The state is overhauling its 911 system. The improvements are supposed to shorten response times while also giving police more information. The new system will allow 911 operators to pinpoint the location of a call within five meters of it almost immediately. While the current system relies on cell phone towers to triangulate where a call is coming from, and that only gives a location within 40 meters of the call. Picture it's going to be great um, because everything we've had to do so far to upgrade our shop, um, this project is, has made us improve here locally. And we've got a list of projects that were, we've recently completed and that we're continuing to go through uh, to get ready for this uh, huge change. This new system will soon also allow people to text and send videos to 911 operators. People in one Champaign County neighborhood say they're worried about a new drug and alcohol rehab center moving onto their street. This treatment center would be in a home on Rolling Acres Drive in the Rolling Acres subdivision. WCI3's Jen Last joins us live there now. And Jen, you spoke with neighbors who say they were blindsided by this. Jessica, they told me they had no idea until this week that a treatment center called Navis is renting out a home in this subdivision. Now, they wanted to know if homes that were zoned to single family properties could be used for this purpose of a drug and alcohol rehab center. So I talked to the county zoning and planning director to find out. 
We want to help people, but you got to let us know what's going on. Joseph Kriegel was shocked when he heard from another neighbor that a detox center would be moving in down the street. We just want to keep everything the same thing. There's a lot of children out here on bicycles walking, and it's tough. It's, it's really a hard, hard thing to swallow right here because the property and their values are not going to help the property values when you bring a, a detox center in. Navis first began working on plans for the home six months ago, but Kriegel and other neighbors say they only found out this week. We were never told, no hearings, no transparency by the company. They just all threw this on. And under normal circumstances, a group of more than five unrelated people wouldn't be able to live together on single family lots. But John Hall, Champaign County's planning and zoning director, says this kind of situation is an exception. Well, this goes back to the Fair Housing Act Amendment of 1988, which um, made it uh, illegal to discriminate in housing against those with disabilities. And um, addiction and alcoholism are considered a disability, just like a physical disability. That means the county has no discretion and must allow recovery homes. Just like anywhere in our jurisdiction, up to five unrelated individuals can occupy the house. But because this is a recovery home, we also allow two uh, management personnel. And no public hearings are necessary. They need a state license, and they have to file a copy of the license with our department. And then they're ready, ready to go. And John Hall says the company is expecting to get that license and turn it over to the county this week. Now, I reached out to Navis as well just to learn a bit more about uh, the process, their timeline. They have not gotten back to me. Live in Champaign County, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Jen, thank you. It's a number that may surprise you. A pandemic has not been good to working moms. Also tonight. Um, I'm always telling everybody to prepare for the worst, but expect the best. And that's what she got, how a group of strangers helped save a life. Kevin, you're back and you brought the sun. Sunshine, cooler temperatures, feeling pretty good, right? Yeah. You, he always looks like he's got a secret to tell I, something. You're always, always looks nervous so when he's no, yeah, she's just always nervous. I, like. I hate when he makes eye contact with me. <laughs> he's like, what? What did I do? I'm always nervous. She, she's the one mistrust. that must have something, you know, feeling guilty about something. I don't know. It's her. This guy. It's her. It's not me. Um, all right, guys. Uh, lots of sunshine, clear blue skies. Nothing to feel bad about, that's for sure, because the nice weather, well, while it's here today may not continue so much tomorrow. Talking storms and a rainy weekend when we come back.